Initially, what I can say is that this motorcycle reminds me of two motorcycles combined. It reminds me of the classic Royal Enfield Bullets and Classics. It also reminds me a lot of a Harley Sportster. And that's a good thing. Welcome to MCC Just Motos. Okay, cool. Get directions. Record, navigate. Okay, so now that I have directions in there, I am going to go start the motorcycle and uh, go for a little ride. It's a nice looking bike. Whoop. There we go. Starts right up. Air cooled. A nice thump to it. Not super loud. See, I got the heel toe shifter, and you can check out my video of the big pads there. Um, I put pads on upgrades. Check my mirrors out. There we go. Someone else is riding, so all right, let's go for a little spin, shall we? This bike seems to get a ton of miles per gallon. Um, I, <laughs> I don't know. I have 70 miles in this. The oh, hang on. I have 70 miles on the tank and it hasn't really even budged at all in the slightest. It's kind of ridiculous. So I'm rocking the heel toe shifter and the foot rest, not the foot peg. Alright, so the tripper is kind of cool. I like it. Cool. And I'm not really revving the motorcycle out crazy because uh, A, it doesn't have a, a tachometer or RPMs. And B, um, you're not supposed to go, I think, below, above 45, 55 miles an hour when you're breaking it in. So I'm going to keep it around there. Um, I can tell you, there's an initial punch right off the bat, plenty. Um, but there's just not a ton after, I don't know, first couple... I don't know, 4,000 RPM maybe? I have no idea because there's no tachometer. But you can lug it around in a, in, a, in a higher gear than you should be in because the torque is plentiful. See, I'm just kind of lugging it and it pulls me out. Decent, decent. And um, initially, what I can say is that this motorcycle reminds me of two motorcycles combined change lanes here um, first of all it reminds me of the classic Royal Enfield bullets and classics the old 500 CC just because a thump you have that thump of a single um, but it's really a smooth thumper this is one of the most smooth smoothest thumpers I know so that's cool um, and it's a five-speed uh, much like the bullets and classics as well uh, the brakes are better than most of the bullets and the classics because um, it's disc not drum the shifter is really smooth the throttle response is nice starts right up i love it it feels like a very capable and reliable motorcycle i've had no issues so far so it reminds me of the Bolts and Classics. It also reminds me a lot of a Harley Sportster. And that's a good thing. So hear me out. The Sportster has some great things to it. Uh, classic feel, classic style, classic thump, classic noise. But how the frame feels and the agility of this feels very similar to a Sportster. The frame size feels really similar to a Sportster. It's, it's a big frame for the size of the engine. That's the thing I can't get over on this. It's a much bigger frame than what you'd think a 350 normally would do. And what that does, it makes it a more acceptable bike for a, someone out of the beginner stage. It's more comfortable and it's a nice suspension. It has decent suspension compliance. You don't feel the, the heaviness of it all. It's not super heavy. It's, you know, 400 and some odd pounds. But yes, it feels like a little bit lighter weight than a Sportster. But, 
and a little more composed, but the flickability of it feels very similar to a lot of sports that I've, I've ridden. And that's a good thing. The comfort level is very nice. Um, it's, it's one of the most comfy, natural feeling motorcycles I have. And you can see my feet are a little bit forward. I'm five, nine and a half. Um, this uh, heel toe shifter took like 30 seconds to get used to, but after you get used to it, it's really nice. It's very natural. Downshift by pushing your toe, upshift by using your heel. Easy to find neutral. So yeah, it feels a lot like the Sportster because it has a classic sound to it. It has a big, or bigger frame feel than a beginner bike such as the Sportster. It has a nimbleness of a Sportster. A little bit better suspension than a Sportster. And just like the Sportster, it has some torque down low. Not as much as the Sportster. But um, yeah, it definitely has its torque down low. And of course, it does feel like a Royal Enfield and has a Royal Enfield blood throughout. I, I really feel that connection to the past. So yes, it's very, very fun and stable and really easy to ride. Um, there I am at 50. It, it feels like it definitely has more, but I'm not going to give it that much more beans. Again, you're watching the tripper. I just have it up for, for giggles. Uh, but yeah, this is a really comfortable, easy to use motorcycle. Um, and it has some modern conveniences. I've been driven 138 miles, 139 miles so far. Uh, I can argue this might be one of the most naturally fitting motorcycles that I've been on in a long, long time. Just the reach is great. There's no adjustments. The seat feels good. The, the feet position feels good. You're not cramped on your hips at all. So, can a American rider dig this motorcycle? Absolutely. Let's take a corner, shall we? No scraping of the pegs. <laughs> In fact, I think some some of the other sports that I've ridden would have scraped right off the bat. It's not a super loud motorcycle. And I will say the counter balance shaft on this is really nice. Um, it's, so it's, there's no vibration that I'm feeling or very little in the handlebars and, and a tiny, tiny, tiny bit in the foot, uh, not pegs, but the foot rests. Um, again, a bigger size tank. Just is a really natural position. I also have a little windshield that I'm going to put on, a little fly screen. So, I like riding this motorcycle because it's one of the easiest motorcycles I have to just get on and go. There's no adjusting, no worried about if it'll start or crank or having to go to choke on. It just goes. And how nice is that? Plus, it's honestly, <coughs> excuse me. Plus, it's honestly a big enough motorcycle where you can ride two up. I've definitely ridden two up, and it's pretty comfy. Um, a nice spring day out. Wow, pretty out. As you can tell, I'm in Maryland. don't know how this bike will do on the highway. I hear it's electronically limited to 72 miles an hour. Uh, and I, I hear that might be a, a holdover from some Indian regulations back where this motorcycle was made. Um, but I don't know. I haven't got there yet. I'm going to wait to 300 miles, do my first service, and then we'll do my highway miles on this. The, I guess the flickability is nice. It's, it's, it will hold a line. It's a little floaty in the corners, in the tight corners. But uh, wow, look at this. All right. I just like coming here. It's 
very pretty out. Let's get one, one quick look at it, huh, shall we? Let's get a look of the motorcycle. What do you guys think? Nice day out? That's really the money side, right? With the exhaust. Alright, let's go. It's easy to get on, too. So, yeah, it's not the most... It's very... It's, it's flickable, meaning you can transition from side to side very easily. It, as long as you're... You're doing it with your hips, not so much the handlebars. The handlebars are, um, they're not twitchy at all. Um, they're very comfortable, but you're, it's flickable if you use your hips. The bike is a little floaty in the corners, in the very, very tight corners. And to be honest, anyone buying this motorcycle for a racing bike, you're buying the wrong bike. Um, there are other smaller bikes, like probably the Hunter 350 which uh, I just put a, a quick price review out on. But it is nimble and agile. And you'll be able to scoot around town, go around potholes really easily on this one. Another thing, so like, here I am. I like a, a private drive, or not private, but like a residential area. And like I said, I like the thump of this motorcycle, but it's not super loud, so I'm not gonna be disturbing my neighbors. Sure, you could get another exhaust and make it louder, but I kind of dig the, the few quiet when you want it to be quiet vibe. And here's agility, like, you know, there's potholes and stuff and I can go all around them, or if there's dirt roads, I can go all around them. And I don't really have to shift much. Um, when I'm in a high gear just because uh, the torque can carry it through. All right. Oh, let's talk brakes. Uh, back brake's good. Front brake is, leaves a little bit to be desired, not horrible. Um, I've had worse, <laughs> for sure I've had worse front brakes. Um, it is, I've actually had better front brakes in, in some Royal Enfields. Um, I'd call it probably about average. I think it's anti-lock. I have no idea. I'm not really going to test it. There's no need, reason for me to test it. And I'm just going to head to the park. Just get a, a nice view out today. But yeah, so so I mean, it will do corners just fine. But if you're really racing. You really, it does get, a, it can get a little wandery, wallowy, and more, more wallowy, not really wandery. Um, you can adjust the preload in the rear, and I have it set for two up right now, so it's a little stiffer than really what it should be. Uh, very, very easy to ride motorcycle. Man, I just love it. I love the looks. I didn't talk about the looks, but I really like the looks of it. A lightweight cruiser. They just don't make any other one that I know of that, that fits the bill of this. I think, I think being that large frame really helps it out. Oh, and our, that's another thing. Because it has the, the foot pegs, or the foot rests, um, it's, it's, it's easy to stand up on bumps, you know, like when you're going over a bump and you want to put your weight on your foot pegs. Um, totally easy to do that. Alright. So I'm going to put on pause here. Okay, I think I'm recording again. Alright, I am at Jack Downs Park in Pasadena, Maryland. Um, this is a really nice park to come check out. Um, you can't park here where I'm going, but it's a really pretty park. See the Chesapeake Bay. It's 
really nice. There's the chest peak. Wow, really cool. Very nice. And this motorcycle would be perfect to go for a picnic or a ride here or something like that. I mean, really, really cool. So first impressions are, I, I like the motorcycle a lot. It's really easy. It's very comfortable. It gets a bunch of gas mileage. Not really expensive. And uh, it just it has a dose of style that, that I really, I don't know what else meets it right now. Um, yeah. You know, I, I don't think, I think it's not intimidating. I think it's, you know, just the opposite. I think it's an inviting motorcycle. And bring, brings more motorcycle riders into the fold. You know, I think the classic 350 has a, a, its own dose of style. The Meteor is a little more unique in the fact that it's really the first styled cruiser that Royal Enfield has made um, that I can think of. You know, the classics, 350s look like the bullets in the classics of, of old, where the Meteor is its own beast, its own unique architecture. And I like this laid back cruiser feel of it. You know, this motor is not going to set the world on fire. Uh, and does it work in a cruiser? Yeah, it kind of does, just from the torque aspect of it. Alright, guys. I think that's going to do for me. There's not much more to say. I mean, it's just so easy and nice, right? What do you guys think? Definitely, you know, drop a comment below. Ask me some questions. What do you want to know about this motorcycle? Uh, is it for you? Do you have a classic? Do you do you want to know how it compares to the bullets of yonder? I have a bullet of yonder. I have had bullets of yonder, classics of, of old. Do you want to know how it compares to that? I can tell you. Um, that's probably going to be its own video. But do you want to know some questions? Uh, you know, drop a comment below. I'd be happy to answer. Give you my thoughts. I've you know, ridden so many motorcycles, I, I've lost track by now. Uh, Alright, that's going to do for me. Please like and subscribe. Enjoy your Royal Enfield Meteor 350 or whatever you ride, and we'll catch you on the next episode.